Megan asked me, she typed out a, a pretty good email here um, on the wealth tax. Will you support a wealth tax is basically in short. So I'm going to roll you a video of uh, Pierre Polliver, who is our channel minister for finance in the House of Commons in Parliament asking questions about the wealth tax. So let's check out the video now. With that and the impact that it will have financially on Canadians. Thank you very much. Uh, it is a good question. You know, the the government uh, has tried this this is a political party that has tried to convince Canadians again and again that they can spend limitlessly without ever having anyone pay for it and now we see that again they claim that they can just create the money out of thin air and spend that instead of uh, paying bills uh, like uh, is mathematically required in every society everywhere in the world but we know that's not true and so they and they do too and so that's why they're starting to concoct schemes to raise money. And we've learned uh, over the weekend from some intrepid uh, journalists over at Black Blacklocks that this government is now studying through CMHC the prospect of a new tax on home equity. And that would be uh, a way for the government to take the, the, the wealth that Canadians have legitimately stored in their homes. So Megan, um, so that, that, that's the answer, can see the answer there. Um, the wealth tax will not solve anything. Uh, it's not through taxation and taking more money out of people's pockets. Uh, a wealth tax has been tried in other countries and it has never, ever worked. It's never raised the revenue people say it will raise. What typically happens, uh, and they've tried this, Spain, Norway, Switzerland, I remember when France tried it as well. Uh, it's been a failure every single time. Because as it so happens, those who have the means will have the means to hire lawyers and accountants to move their money around to, to avoid this. Uh, the, the NDP have tried moving motions, you know, to tax fortunes over 20 million at the rate of 1%. But then it becomes the problem of trying to figure out uh, what exactly should be included in the wealth tax. How, for instance, do you assess the illiquid assets such as art, antiques, real estate, uh, uh, when real estate is sold, that's when you have the true value of it. The estimated value of it, the potential value of it doesn't matter until you find a buyer for the property. So how would a government assess what the value is at the federal government level, not the property tax level, to then levy a tax on people? And they will then find a way around it. So that's why it's failed everywhere it's been tried. And one of the failures is it encourages base erosion, profit shifting, because they will move their assets overseas to not pay the tax. They will move into corporations, not pay the tax. There's always a, round, a way around it. Um, another point to raise here is uh, the government of Canada already taxes all taxpayers at around the rate of $340 billion a year. And that includes income taxes, business taxes, payroll taxes, fuel taxes, levies, tariffs, GST, customs, and all types of other taxes that are being levied by the federal government. That is a, an immense amount of money. There's a plenty amount of money to go around to pay for different things. It's about making choices with scarce resources. I simply think as a conservative, they're making poor choices in how they spend money, poor choices in how they assess what is a priority and what is not a priority. Um, so like I said, it's been tried before in other places. In Canada already, uh, the top 1% of income earners pays already 18% of all income taxes. Uh, so you gotta ask yourself, Megan, when is it enough? At what point uh, do they pay enough? Another point, another data point, so Statistics Canada again here, the top 1% share of income taxes paid by uh, top 1% of earners was double that of those people who find themselves at the bottom 50%. So half the population pays as much taxes as top 1% of income earners. And you perhaps you will say, well, that's a that's a you know confirmation of income inequality. But it really depends what you consider as income. And if you begin to tax wealth and assets, you're going to have to put a value onto it. As soon as you do that, people will begin to engage in base erosion. So shifting around their assets to avoid taxes. It has happened every single time it's been tried. Um, you know, others have asked me. Uh, you know, do conservatives support a shadow plan to get economy back on track? Yes, we do. We're developing it right now because we just went through a leadership race. And like I mentioned, uh, things that would improve Alberta's economy, getting the Trans Mountain Pipeline built, uh, revoking and abolishing C-48, the anti-tanker ban bill, abolishing C-69, the anti-pipelines bill, scrapping Trudeau's carbon tax, 
implementing a federal LNG export strategy, passing a National Strategic Pipelines Act so we don't have the problems we have today where nobody wants to build a new pipeline. All of those would improve Alberta's economy and most importantly, they would bring jobs back to Alberta. You know, Michael asked a question about the flat income tax and I like the idea, Alberta had one for a very, very long time. Um, Michael, I'm gonna encourage you to look at the Fraser Institute website. They have a proposal for a, a two set income tax two income tax rates basically 115 i think at 129 percent it's an interesting proposal but today the difficulty would be we're facing a 343 billion dollar projected deficit it's going to be extremely difficult with a 1.2 trillion dollar debt to find ways to reduce people's taxes when we're also then saying that we're going to saddle them with a, an immense amount of new debt to address the pandemic and the liberals have misspent Quite a bit of money so far some of the programs we supported some of the programs made sense but they weren't tuned the correct way and that's where disagreements came in um, so flat income taxes i support in principle but they cannot at this point uh, be implemented because simply uh, we have a massive deficit that we need to deal with we have a massive amount of debt that we need to pay off and the federal government owes it to you, to future generations, to make sure that it's a good steward of the financial resources that it receives. So um, I'm caution. Like I'm, I'm, I'm always going to be cautioning people on this one. I mean, it's it's an idea that's been talked about many times. I think it's where you set the rate that's most important uh, to Albertans. And so that would be my my answer on those questions.